Metro Exodus is 4A Games' newest instalment into the Metro series. Following the events from 2033 and Last Light, Metro Exodus follows the story of Artyom, a survivor in post-apocalyptic Russia after the Earth was devastated by nuclear war, wiping out all life apart from those who made it to the Metro. Or at least that's what you're told. Refusing to believe they're alone and there is life outside the Metro, Artyom and his wife Anna discover that all radio signals are being blocked by a signal jammer, stopping any signal that tries to leave or enter the Metro. It stops Moscow from hearing anyone, and them from hearing us. After disabling the jammer, communications from all over the world start being picked up and Artyom and Anna realise they are not as alone as they once thought. Stealing a train and fleeing from the containment and safety of Moscow's underground metro, Artyom, Anna, her father Miller, who's a big commander boy, and a bunch of stragglers from the Spartan Order set off to discover a new life outside. But the people outside obviously aren't as welcoming to newcomers as you might think. Come out, you bitch! We'll open you up! In this video, I'd like to talk about how the game looks, feels, and plays, throw in a couple of my opinions here and there, and just give an overall summary of my time playing it. I'll be avoiding most of the key story points, so there isn't going to be any spoilers if you want to try the game for yourself. Metro Exodus plays like you would expect from a first person shooter. You've got a gun and you kill the men, easy peasy. Most of the gameplay elements from the previous games in the series return, obviously. There's still a need for a gas mask, which you have to pop on from time to time. You're equipped with a Geiger counter for situations where radiation isn't your friend. And ammo is quite scarce, meaning stealth options work more in your favour than going in all guns blazing. Besides, if you went in shooting everyone all the time, you'd eventually run out of ammo and have to resort to stealth anyway. So the ideal approach is to conserve your ammo where you can, and don't draw attention to yourself, and then you'll be fully prepared for the gunfights. This game definitely has the Metro game feel, which is consistent through the series. I don't know what 4A have done, be it the graphics, weapons or environment, or a mix up of all three, but the games in the series definitely have this very clear Metro feel, and fans of the series will be happy to know it's still present in Exodus. Metro Exodus takes place in three unique and diverse places. The Volga, set on small islands surrounded by bodies of water infested with big old fish. This is the first location you get to really stretch your legs and experience everything Exodus has to offer. Thunderstorms will slow you down and block your vision, but they just make this area feel more dingy and muddy. With plenty of land and multiple building outposts to take over and loot, this area is nicely rounded and probably my favourite of the three. The Caspian is a large open seabed desert area. This is a second area you get to explore where you're quickly given a vehicle to traverse the landscape in a more timely manner. Getting the car so early makes the area feel a lot smaller than it is, as most of the exploration factor is removed in favour of just driving from point A to point B. There are still small lots to loot and find items along the way however, so it's not entirely barren. Snowstorms are very frequent in the area, blocking your vision and enemy vision alike, allowing you to execute less stealthy approaches in the safety of the sand. The Tiger area is smaller than both the Volga and the Caspian, and much more linear also. I mean look at it, it's basically a big ol' hallway. However, it's much more densely populated than the other zones, meaning there are little to no dead spots. I did find I was pushed more in the direction of the story in this area, whether there are less or more little hideouts I couldn't say because it more or less whizzed past. There are other settings between these areas in the game, however those areas are very linear, just getting you from one end to the other, whereas these areas are more diverse. Because Exodus is set in a more open world than the previous titles, you can discover secluded camps that can be used as a base, wherein you can find crafting tables, some materials, and a bed to pass the time and heal. When you do sleep, you can choose if you want to wake up at dawn or dusk, allowing for a more diverse playstyle by pushing enemy bases at night, where vision is limited and you're less easily spotted, or daytime, where there are less guards but you're much more in the open. When you do sleep, we get to see a fancy looking time lapse showing the sun or moon rise and fall depending on when you decide to wake up. All the bases show different perspectives of the time lapse, so it never really gets old. This game also introduces a new crafting mechanic, allowing the player the ability to craft a range of items on the fly that would otherwise be hard to come by, including medkits, filters for your gas mask, tin cans that can be used as distractions, as well as throwing knives, bombs and molotovs, and some ammo types. The full crafting experience you have to search for a crafting table which allows you to add attachments to your weapons, swap to different weapons as well as clean them to make them more efficient, and also equip new gear that you might find out in the world. All that's required to craft are some extremely basic crafting materials in the form of uh, a wrench and a washer, and uh, a science. Both of which are easy to come by just from looting enemies, buildings or vehicles, dismantling weapons and finding boxes with loot. And also finding weird glowy mushroom things, because why the hell not, right? 
I can't really review a Metro game without having a big old section about its graphics. TLDR, it's pretty fucking good. The brilliant level design and the well placed light sources mixed with the game's atmosphere provide a pleasing top notch visual experience, but the same could be said for previous games in the series as well. What can't be said about previous games in the series is RTX. Yep, Metro Exodus is one of the promotional big boys when it comes to RTX, so how does it look? Short answer? Meh. Long answer? Not bad. I didn't play with RTX on all the time because of the performance impact it has, but as you can see by these comparisons, RTX doesn't really add a lot to this game in most areas. However, this is less of a complaint about RTX, and more praise as to how good the normal lighting looks. From my experience of RTX, it shines the brightest inside and in dimly lit areas. Most of the outside areas that are lit directly by the sun can't take full advantage of the global illumination, and thus look pretty underwhelming. However, as you can see, even some areas on the inside are pretty underwhelming as well, even when they take full advantage of RTX. Maybe it's just my opinion of RTX as a whole, and I'll probably have to make another video diving into this deeper, but for now I feel like it's in its infancy, and there's probably still a long ways it needs to go before I use it all the time. With all the good shit out the way, I suppose I better start talking about the bad. There isn't much to point out though. Metro, like all games, is not without its bugs. Some were very minor, like the bat thing pulling me out of a car, which I'm fairly sure is not supposed to happen. Others were pretty game-breaking, like the one time I tried to kill a dude and I got stuck in a wall, forcing me to restart from a previous save, which wasn't too bad because of how frequent the game saves anyway, but it was a bit more hassle that I didn't want to deal with. Speaking of them, let's talk about loading times. Oh boy! Sometimes the loading is speedy, sometimes it takes ages. And when it takes ages, boy it takes ages. Luckily there's some dialogue to keep you updated on the story whilst it does its thing, so it's not terrible. In conclusion, I really enjoyed my time playing this game. It's definitely the type of game you can play over and over again and get a different experience each time, either by rushing through it or taking your time and exploring every little nook and cranny. The linear errors will get frustrating as they're plentiful, however more often than not, they're a small setback for an otherwise beautiful game. I was hooked for about 10-11 hours total, which is about what I expected from a game of this scale. I give it a pretty solid 4 out of 5. I had a great time playing it.